So a closed heart communicator is someone who struggles to express their emotions openly and tends to keep their feelings guarded. And if you feel this way, you will find it extremely difficult to form meaningful connections, may often fall prey to misunderstanding and will normally have a limited support group. And it does not matter whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. It's all about how you communicate. So I am going to share with you three tricks you can use to transform your communication style from a closed heart communicator to an emotionally expressive communicator. First, build a Pollyanna attitude. This means you're going to have to have an unwavering positive mindset. Choose to see the best in people and situations and refuse to dwell on their shortcomings or negatives. For example, if your co-worker makes a mistake, you need to resist the urge to criticize. Instead, highlight their strengths and provide constructive feedback. This way, you're creating a time and space for the co-worker to open up and learn. Using this Pollyanna attitude will showcase you as a high-performing co-worker, a trustworthy colleague, and a respectful leader. Second, focus on seeking to understand. Too often, closed heart communicators are quick to judge or dismiss others' perspectives without truly understanding where they're coming from. Instead of jumping to conclusions, take the time to listen actively and empathetically to others' thoughts and feelings. Ask open-ended questions, paraphrase what they've said to ensure understanding and validate their emotions. For example, if your partner expresses frustration about something, instead of dismissing their feelings or offering solutions right away, take a moment to empathize with them and ask questions to understand their perspective better. By seeking to understand, we leverage communication and that builds intimacy, breaks down our partner's internal barriers and builds trust in the relationship. Third, communicate to align, not disengage. Understand that communication is a skill. We have learned this skill indirectly from our friends, family, caregivers, and those around us since our birth. But what we may have been taught may not always be the right way. Understand how you communicate. Are you accusing and confronting versus communicating? Are you reacting defensively versus showing willingness to listen? Are you painting the conversation in a negative tone to win one argument and though this may feel good now, it will make you lose the trust in the relationship. For this, we need to stop amplifying the negative behaviors and pushing people away and instead focus on the goal of building the relationship. So when the next time you feel the urge to counterattack, take a minute or two to give each other space to respond with empathy. For this, you need to stop the criticism of wanting to tell your partner what is wrong with them or being defensive and playing the innocent victim or even stonewalling which is withdrawing from the conversation either physically or energetically. If the relationship is important to you and you want to build stronger communication, you need to lead with clarity and compassion. This means that we will set aside our own assertion that we are right and the other person is wrong. We will stop deleting, distorting and generalizing details of the conversation happening in our own heads and also stop expecting the other person to understand us. Let's try to lead with what is said and not what is perceived. The root cause of most conflicts in communication isn't what is said, but it is often what isn't said. And these negative misunderstandings make arguments more frequent. So to heal the loss of connection, we need more open-hearted, emotionally expressive communication. Remember that we are all different and how we think and share will be different and that is the beauty of each of us. If we can empathize with what our partner, our co-worker or any other person may be experiencing, we can understand each other's needs and desires. Once we understand this, it is easier to work collaboratively on how those needs and desires can be met. And if you want to learn how to build love for yourself, check out this video right here.